All right, welcome back, Hananiga Geometry. Today we're going to talk about rotation. So another transformation here, section 4.3. But before we get into that, let's talk, let's do a little warm up here. Now, triangle coordinates 2, 4, 0, negative 1, and negative 3, 5 is reflected over the y equals negative x axis. Now, find the coordinates of the image. When you're not given a graph, it's probably easiest to look at the rule. The rule for a rotation across the y equals negative x, negative x axis is negative b, negative a. And this will be given to you on the test. And so if you're looking at just the rule, which is important because when we do today is basically we're going to use a rule all the time. So if you have a point and you want to do it across the rotation, or excuse me, a um, reflection across the y equals negative x, then a prime, you take the a and the b, you flip them, and change the sign. So a prime would be negative 4, negative 2. b prime, again, flip them, change the sign. And c prime would be negative 5, positive 3. So next, a certain translation can be described by the component form of negative 3, and I didn't like the fact that it, it went to different places. Negative 3, 4, write the rule. So the rule for xy being rotated, or being translated, negative 3, so you're going to subtract 3 from the x, and you're going to add 4 to the y. And there we go. Today we're going to talk about rotations. Rotation is another rigid motion, because ultimately you are not changing the shape, you're merely rotating it around a fixed point. And so a rotation is a transformation in which the figure is turned about a fixed point. This fixed point is called the center of rotation. Rays drawn from the center to the rotation to a point and its image form an angle of rotation. Now this picture is one that we won't necessarily do, but this is being rotated 40 degrees around the center point, P. And so notice you have R, and you're going to rotate 40 degrees to R prime. And you have Q, and it's going to rotate over here to Q prime. Now, for our purposes in this class, okay, we are always going to do counterclockwise. Okay, so going around counterclockwise. But you could do clockwise or counterclockwise technically. Here is the rules that you should memorize, not memorize, sorry. Here's the rules that will be given to you on your quiz and on your test. So if I'm going to do a rotation 90 degrees, notice the AB point turns into negative B, A. A rotation 180 becomes negative A, negative B, and a rotation of 270. And yes, we are going counterclockwise. So we are going around to the left. So AB would turn into B, negative A. So again, this page, take a picture of it. I'll ultimately save that one. That one's going to be given to you. Here we go. So I want to do a quadrilateral RS to U with vertices of 3, 1, 5, 1, 5, negative 3. And so what I usually do is I write out all my points. So I have T and I have U. Now, I want to do a quadrilateral around the origin, 270 degrees counterclockwise. I know it doesn't say that, but it should. So the rule is, for 270 degrees, you go negative B, excuse me, positive B, negative A. So if I was going to do R prime, it would be positive 1, And then negative A, so negative 3. S prime, positive 1, negative 5. T prime, positive 3, negative 5. And then U prime, positive 1, negative 2. So notice, it doesn't, whoops, I apologize for that one. That one should be negative 1, negative 2. So you don't change the... B value, so you don't change the B value, and you do change the A value. So I apologize that I went through there. Now I'm going to do each one in a different color. I'll do the original. So 3, 1, positive 3, positive 1, 
positive 5, positive 1, positive 5, negative 3, and positive 2, negative 1. So this is R, S, T, U. Next, let's see if I can do the, the image now. So 1, negative 3, 1, I can't graph right now, sorry. 1, negative 3, One negative five, negative three, negative five, negative three, negative five, and negative one, negative two. One negative five, one negative three, one negative five. I apologize there. So note notice this is going to rotate. It's the same image. It's the same image as before. It's been rotated 270 degrees. And so one negative three, this would be R prime. One negative five would be S prime. Flipping this around, this would be negative three, negative five would be T prime. And this would be u prime. So knowing the rules or being given the rules to help with your rotation. Next, grab the triangle, negative 3, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 1. Then rotate the triangle 90 degrees about the origin. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the previous example and hope that I graph it a little bit better this time. Negative 3, positive 2. 2, positive 4 and three positive one so there's our point now if i'm going to go 90 degrees we're talking about a b turns into negative b a here we go a prime then would be notice you're flipping the a and the b and switching the sign for b so switching the sign for b keeping a the same switching the sign for b keeping a the same switching the sign for B and keeping A the same. Now I'm going to graph both. I'm going to graph the original one in blue, graph the new one in uh, red, and see what happens. So negative 3, positive 2, there's A prime. Positive 2, positive 4, there's B. Positive 3, positive 1. So there is my original triangle A, B, C. 90 degrees. So I'm going 90 degrees to the left. Negative 2, negative 3. I meant to do this in a different color. There we go. Negative 4, positive 2. There's B prime, A prime. And then negative 1, positive 3, C prime. Notice, this is the exact same picture. It's been turned. It's been turned this way 90 degrees. Now, performing composition of rotations. Again, because this is a rigid motion, I can perform different operations on the same one. So I can do a composition of functions. I can do a translation, which I didn't in, uh, or a slide, which I did in section 4.1. It's section 4.2. we did reflections and now we're doing rotation. So all of these require rigid motion. I again like to use the rules and that's me personally. So I see R as one negative three and S as two negative six. And now if I wanna do a reflection on the Y axis, the rule for reflection on the Y axis is negative A and then B. So using my rules, if I went, I changed the A, changed the sign of A, and kept B the same. I changed the sign of, I changed the sign of A and kept B the same. So there would be a reflection across the 
reflects it across the x-axis. Then, if I did a 90 degree about the origin, the rules for 90 degrees is uh, negative B, positive A. So I'm taking the, the previous one, this would be S prime, I'm taking the previous one, not the original, the previous one, and I'm going to switch the sign of B and A. So I'm switching the sign and keeping A. I'm switching the sign and keeping A. Now, on the graph, normally on the graph, they want the first image, the pre-image, and the ending image. If they want you to do the middle image, you can't. So they want all three steps, by all means. This is where colors would come into play. And so I'm going to do the first one in red. So we have R, which is 1, negative 3, and S, which is positive 2, negative 6. So here's R, here's S. That's the original image, the pre-image. Doing one at a time. So let's say I did this one in red. We're going to do the next one in blue. So now, what would a reflection across the y-axis look like? Negative 1, negative 3, and negative 2, negative 6. So notice, going back to section uh, 4, 2, that would be a reflection across the y-axis. Now a rotation, 90 degrees. So we're spinning this thing 90 degrees. And so I'll do this one in green. Positive 3, negative 1, there's R double prime, and positive 6, negative 2, this is S double prime. So notice, you're spinning this way 90 degrees. Rotational symmetry, if you rotate anything less than 180 degrees and end up getting the exact same picture, this is called rotational symmetry. Notice, this picture and this picture are identical to each other, and they only went 90 degrees. And then this picture is identical, because you went 180 degrees. So if you get an identical picture by going a rotation of 90 or, excuse me, anything less than, so anything less than 180 degrees, and you get the exact same picture, it has rotational symmetry. You always have to pick a center when doing this. So here we go. If I put something in the center, if I actually went 180 degrees, I would have the exact same poly parallelogram. So therefore, this does have rotational symmetry at 180 degrees. Now, the next one has more, has a multiple Okay, rotational. Determine whether each polygon has rotational symmetry. If so, describe any rotations that the map of the polygon onto itself. Every time it moves to the next point, it would actually then rotate. So here's 180 going straight across. And so if I divide this up into 1, 2, 3, every 45 degrees, this picture has rotational symmetry. And the last one has no rotational symmetry. You would actually have to go 360 degrees all the way around to get back to its original picture. So this one does have rotational symmetry every 45 degrees. SAT question now. I'm given a function. It's defined by the given function. For what value does x reach its minimum? They want you to find the vertex. This is called intercept form. So it crosses the x-axis at x equaling 10, and it's crossing the x-axis at x equaling negative 13. So the halfway point between the two, so I got positive 10 and negative 3, the halfway point between those two, and, or negative 13, sorry, is negative 3 halves, or negative 1.5. Plugging negative 1.5 in for the x's will allow me to come up with the maximum or minimum, in this case, minimum value. So here's what you're going to end up doing. Negative 1.5 minus 10, which is negative 11.5. Negative 1.5 plus 13, which then gets you 
positive 11.5. So if I take 11.5 times 11.5, I'm going to get my minimum value of a minimum value of 132.25. Now, reading the question again, it says what value of x? So even though this is the point, a minimum point, the x value okay, is at negative 3 halves. Your homework assignment is a 4-3 worksheet. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher, and good luck.